dielectrics are basically non conducting material they don't have free electrons so they don't they can't conduct electrical effect but still they can transfer electric effect through through induction so we have discussed types of dielectrics there are two types of dielectrics one is polar and another is non polar dielectric see what is polar dielectric in polar dielectric center of positive and negative charge does not coincide if you have a polar dielectric in polar dielectric the center of positive and negative charge in a molecule are at some separation the system will have if positive and negative charge does not coincide that means this system can have a non zero dipole moment this will have a non zero dipole the examples include like nacl molecule in nacl molecule the positive charge is on sodium negative charge is on chloride so center of positive and negative charge are does not coincide they are at different position like nacl there is one more example like hcl there is example like h2o so these are examples of polar dielectric so in polar dielectrics center of positive and negative charge and negative charge does not coincide so in polar dielectric the center of positive charge does not coincide with the center of negative charge molecule have some net dipole moment molecule have some net non zero dipole moment so that's polar dielectric examples includes and you know, sodium chloride hcl h2o these are examples of polar dielectric the next type of dielectrics are non polar dielectric in non polar dielectrics the center of positive charge will coincide with the center of negative charge the positive and negative charge are at the same place center of positive and negative charge coincide with each other if they coincide with each other the examples include o2 molecule h2 molecule in these examples center of positive and negative charges are at one place here center of positive charge coincide with center of negative charge with center of negative dipole moment is zero dipole moment of molecule is zero so this is polar and non polar dielectric okay note it down akhi Is your first class?
Fatma, Joanna, is it clear this polar and non-polar dielectric? Can I read it? Sure. Next one. The next is uh, polarization. The next topic polarization. See, what is polarization? So if you have a molecule, Johanna, is this molecule polar or non-polar? The given molecule is a polar molecule or a non-polar molecule, Johanna? Here, positive and negative charges coincide. So Johanna, example of polar or a non-polar molecule? Non-polar. It's a non-polar molecule. Okay. The polarization means what's the dipole moment of this molecule? If this molecule is non-polar, then what's the dipole moment of this molecule, Joanna? Zero. Zero. Polarization means to induce a dipole moment in this molecule. If somehow we can induce a dipole moment in this molecule, then we'll say the molecule is becomes polar and the process is known as polarization. Yeah, just a minute. Just maybe these Fatma and Afroza are having some internet issues. Just just for a minute. Let's wait for a minute. Joanna, to study polarization, we will use some old concepts like if I take an electric field and place a charge in this electric field. What would happen with this charge if I place a charge in an electric field, Joanna? What will happen with this charge? This charge will experience a force. This charge will experience an electric force, Q. The positive charge will experience force in the direction of heat. The negative charge will experience same force in opposite direction. So whenever you place a charge in a field, that charge will experience force. Positive charge will experience force in the direction of field. And negative charge will experience same force, but in opposite direction. Afroza take screenshot of this thing. You just have missed this discussion. Those are take a screenshot of this topic. Okay, let's start with polarization. In polarization, we will use a concept of electric field that if I 
take electric field and this electric field, if I place a positive charge, this positive charge will experience an electric force in the direction of field. If in the same field, I place a negative charge, this negative charge will experience same force, but in opposite direction. If I place a positive charge in field, this positive charge will experience a force in the direction of field. If I place a negative charge in the same field, this negative charge will experience same force, but in opposite direction. So if I take a non-polar molecule, it's a non-polar molecule, means a molecule having zero diatomic. If I place this molecule in external field, if I place this molecule in sub external field, then this electric field will exert force over this molecule. It will exert force over positive as well as negative charge. This field will exert a force which is Fe on the positive charge and a force minus of Fe on the negative charge. So the field will exert electric force over the charge. And due to this electric force, this positive and negative charge gets separated. Molecule develop a non-zero dipole moment. And this phenomena is known as polarization. So in presence of external electric field, in presence of external electric field, molecule develop a non-zero dipole moment non-zero dipole moment known as polarization this is known as polarization. So whenever you place a molecule in some external field, that molecule will develop a dipole moment. This phenomena is known as polarization of molecule. That's polarization. If I keep on increasing the strength of electric field, then this forces, this positive and negative forces will keep on increasing. And for a particular value of electric field, your molecule will break down. And this is known as dielectric breakdown. This is known as dielectric breakdown. And dielectric strength. This is known as dielectric breakdown and dielectric strength. So if I place a molecule in some external electric field, then electric field will exert force over the molecule. Due to this force, this molecules stretch like so if this is the molecule, I place an external field over this molecule. The positive charge, the field will push this positive charge in this direction and field will exert force over negative charge in opposite direction. If I keep on increasing the value of electric field at a particular value of field, this molecule gets break down. It get breaks down into positive and negative charge. This is known as dielectric break. This is known as dielectric breakdown. And the value of electric field at which a dielectric breaks down, this value is known as dielectric strength. So we can write this definition as when a dielectric is placed in a very high electric field it 
electric field it's positive it can break into positive and negative ion this is known as breakdown this phenomena is dielectric breakdown it's dielectric breakdown Uh, yes, it's the same thing you have studied in chemistry. Right? So, if you apply an external electric field to a dielectric molecule, then positive and negative charges will experience forces in opposite direction. Stretch will keep on increasing, and at a point, at a value of field, dielectric breaks down. That's known as dielectric stretch. So, is it clear? i'm writing the definition of dielectric strength so maximum value of electric field electric field that can be applied to a dielectric that can be applied to a dielectric without its breakdown without its breakdown is dielectric strength breakdown is dielectric strength that's dielectric strength okay just tell me one more thing after breakdown breakdown means your dielectric breaks into positive and negative ions after breakdown your dielectric is conducting or non conducting although dielectric is a non conducting medium but i'm asking what about after breakdown after breakdown your dielectric will remain non conducting or it will be it should become conducting yes it should become conducting because ions are conducting So always remember this thing. After breakdown, after breakdown, dielectric can conduct. Like air is a dielectric medium, so it's non-conducting. But if you apply a strong electric field to air, a electric field of the value three into ten raised to the power five. then your air will become conducting it can leak charges in air okay just note it down shall i raise it the next topic is capacitor the next is capacitor or first it study capacitance then we'll do capacitor the next is capacitor so capacitance simply means charge holding capacity of a conductor capacitance simply means its charge holding capacity of a conductor
the charge holding capacity of a conductor is known as capacitor a conductor having greater capacitance can hold more amount of charge greater amount of charge so if you have a conductor and you're supplying some charge to this conductor its potential will keep on rising if you keep on providing charge to the conductor its potential keep on rising so you can say that charge on the conductor is directly proportional to capacitance so it's directly proportional to potential you keep on adding charge on the conductor its potential keep on increasing when you remove this sign of proportionality you will get a constant c this constant c is known as capacitance and this capacitance will control the charge its charge holding capacity a conductor having greater capacitance can store greater amount of charge so from this equation you can write that your c is q by v this is the expression of c capacitance joanna can you guess its si unit what is si unit of charge coulomb coulomb what about v volt uh, potential Joanna, a sign unit of potential V. Volt. Volt. So here Q is charge, and V is potential. So it's Coulomb divided by volt. So it should be Coulomb volt in this. That's Coulomb volt in this. A sign unit, which is known as Farad. Coulomb volt inverse, which is Farad. But Farad is a very big unit. A capacitance of one Farad is a very very large unit. Usually in calculation, you use comparative smaller unit like milli Farad. One milli Farad means ten raised to the power minus three Farad. Or you could use micro Farad. Micro Farad means ten raised to the power minus six Farad. Or you can use pico Farad. Pico means ten raised to the power minus twelve farad, or you can use nano farad. Nano farad means ten raised to the power minus five farad. The next is this capacitance is independent. Capacitance is independent of charge and potential. it's independent of charge and potential but when you look when you look at this particular equation it seems that capacity is directly proportional to charge yeah it's nano farad yeah it's nano farad when you look, look at this equation it seems that capacity is directly proportional to charge and this is inversely proportional to potential but exactly this potential too depends upon charge so that charge and charge gets cancelled out so the capacity is independent of charge as well as potential it depends only on geometry it depends only on geometry it depends only on geometry it depends only over the geometry of conductor nothing else only on the geometry. so if i take if i plot a graph charge versus potential graph i am taking charge on the x axis and potential on the y axis just by looking at this equation a froza can you guess the nature of graph it would be straight line parabolic hyperbolic just by looking at this equation can you guess the nature of the graph straight line parabolic circular hyperbolic So, Fatma, can you guess the nature of the graph? Q versus V graph. Yes, it would be straight line. Now, Froza, if equation is linear, see Q, the power of Q is one, V is one. Equation is linear. So, just the graph would be a straight line. It would be a straight line graph. Graph would be a straight line. If I calculate the slope of this graph, let's say this angle is theta. 
if I make a right angle triangle here, then this perpendicular is parallel to V. This base is parallel to Q. So you can write that your slope, which is equal to tan theta, is V by Q. And see, what is V by Q? V by Q is 1 by C. The slope will be 1 by C now. Is it clear? You know slope, huh? You all know what is slope, right? Yeah, Johanna, see. From this equation, it seems that capacity depends upon charge as well as potential. But this potential itself depends upon charge. If you consider the case of a point charge, then your potential is Q by 4 pi epsilon naught r. So this charge gets cancelled out with charge. And the term which remains, this 4 pi epsilon naught r, it's neither charge nor potential, it's simple geometry. That's why we say that it depends only on geometry and nature of surrounding medium. Surrounding medium. You will get the proof of this statement throughout this chapter capacitance. In every calculation, you will see that capacity comes out to be independent of Q. So your slope is 1 by C. Okay, if I just flip the axis, Joanna, now can you guess the slope if I just flip the axis? Like this is my Q and this is V. Can you guess what is the value of slope now, Joanna? It will be negative. It will be negative, not negative. It won't be negative. Slope is tan theta. Now this perpendicular is parallel to Q and base is parallel to V. So tan theta is perpendicular upon base. Tan theta is Q by V and Q by V is C. It's tan theta which is Q by C. This Q by V is C. So now slope will be 1 by, not 1 by C, your slope will be V. Just note it down, then we'll do some more graphs. Any doubts? Okay, the next is uh, this is Q and this is C. C versus Q graph. Now, since your capacitance is absolutely independent of charge, so the nature of graph is a straight line, it's parallel to Q. You keep on changing charge, capacity will not change. Similarly, if I ask you to plot C versus V graph, capacitance is independent of potential. If you keep on changing potential, capacity should not change. So again, your graph will be a straight line parallel. Keep on changing your potential, capacity will not change. So these are some important graphs. Okay, after these graphs, this, the next is capacitance of a spherical conductor. Okay, do one thing. Just note these two graphs. I need more space. Sorry. 
capacitance of a spherical conductor capacitance of a spherical conductor so you have a sphere a spherical conductor it could be hollow or solid because if you have a conductor then charge will reside only on the outer surface nothing else if you have a conductor charge will reside only on the outer surface the charge is q radius of the conductor is capital r so charge q is uniformly distributed uniformly distributed on the surface of conductor on the surface of conductor of radius r so charge q is uniformly distributed on the surface of a conductor the radius of the conductor is r you are supposed to calculate potential on the surface of conductor potential on surface of conductor so fatma what is the expression for potential on the surface of conductor we did this in the last class potential on the surface of conductor v fatma not p sin theta i'm asking potential not potential energy potential afroza what is potential expression of potential on the surface of a conductor spherical conductor yes k q by r potential on the surface of spherical conductor is 4 pi epsilon not q by capital r this is what we did in the last class huh? q by 4 pi epsilon not capital r then you can write your capacitance c is the ratio of charge and potential is the ratio of charge q and potential 4 pi epsilon not r this q gets cancelled out with this q and you are left with only 4 pi epsilon not so this is the capacitance of a sphere spherical conductor so see capacity depends only over epsilon not which basically depends on medium and capital r which is the radius of the sphere so again your capacity is independent of charge and using this expression you can calculate the capacity of earth the capacitance of earth see earth is conducting and we can consider earth as almost a perfect sphere so if we consider earth as a sphere sir i have a doubt yes yeah if a conductor does not have any charge inside so why do we need to calculate capacitance because while calculating calculating charge which is on the surface of conductor capacity doesn't mean that charge is inside the conductor if the charge is distributed on the surface of conductor then too we are calculating capacity at how much charge can be given to the surface of conductor if you try to give charge beyond that capacity then this charge will simply leak to the environment it will simply leak to the environment so capacity doesn't mean that we are placing charge inside the conductor we are just placing charge on the surface of conductor and one more interesting thing this this leakage uh, okay we will we will discuss this leakage in a while just just let me complete this topic then we will discuss what do you mean by leakage of charge usually 
students have misconception that leakage of charge is just like leakage of water from a container isn't it you think that capacity of a conductor is like capacity of a container if i'm asking if i'm saying that charge leak from a conductor you think that the, the leakage of charge is just like the leakage of water from a container the way water leak from a container is same as the charge leak from a conductor these are two different concepts totally different concepts we will discuss the leakage of charge in a while although that's not a part of your syllabus we will discuss it let me just finish this one so if we consider earth as a sphere then capacitance of earth capacitance of earth c earth can be written as 4 pi epsilon naught r earth so how much is the radius of earth you can calculate its numerical value what is the radius of earth anyone what is the radius of earth radius of earth is 6.4 into 10 raised to the power 6 meter that is the radius of earth if i solve this thing so we will get that capacity of earth is 711 into 10 raised to the power minus 6 farad So the capacity of Earth comes out to be seven hundred and eleven miles. If I consider a conductor of the size of Earth, like I am considering the Earth as a conductor, then the capacity of the whole Earth is seven hundred and eleven microfarad. This is seven one one microfarad. Is it clear the capacitance of a spherical conductor? So can I erase it? Okay, let's discuss leakage of charge from a conductor. Although it's not a part of your syllabus, I wanted to skip this topic, but okay, let's discuss leakage of charge from a conductor. Before leakage of charge, let's discuss what do you mean by leakage of water from a conductor. Let's say I take a container, a container of some volume two liter. I keep on adding water into that container. Once this container gets filled, means this container has stored two liter of water. If I try to adding some more water to the container, then it will start leaking. This is leakage of water from a container. So you think that charge will leak in the same manner? Aproza, Fatma, Johanna. You think that charge will leak in the same manner? Okay. Johanna, Fatma. See, charge is not a particle. Unlike water, unlike fluid, charge is not a particle. Charge is a property. See, filling a container with water, and filling a contain conductor with charge are two different things water is a particle it's something that you can store charge is just a property electron is not charge electron is a particle which have a negative charge so charge is just a property so what do you mean by leakage of charge the leakage of charge you can understand leakage of charge using dielectric breakdown let's say i consider a conductor it's a conductor and this is air around this conductor
I provide some charge, let's say a charge of 10 coulomb to this conductor. Can this charge conduct to air? Is it possible that air carries this charge with itself? Can charge conduct this air to a different place? Yes or no? Is it possible that air starts conducting this charge? No. Because air is dielectric. Air is non-conducting. Air cannot carry this charge from one point to another. Air is non-conducting. So charge, since air cannot carry this charge, so we say that charge does not leak from the surface of conductor. But if you provide charge to a conductor, then this conductor will generate some electric field. The strength of electric field will keep on increasing with the value of charge. If you keep on increasing the charge, the value of this electric field will increase. Say this is an air molecule. This electric field will exert a force on air molecule. Johanna, what will happen if electric field exert force on air molecule? See, this is a conductor. You're providing charge to a conductor. This conductor will generate some electric field. You keep on increasing the charge on the conductor. The strength of electric field will increase. So, what will happen if this electric field interact with the air molecule? What this field can do with air molecule? Johanna. This field, if we go back to the topic of dielectric breakdown, this field will exert air can conduct this. This electric field will exert force on air molecules. If I keep on increasing, so the force will be like positive charge will experience force in the direction of field. Negative charge will experience same force but in opposite direction. If you keep on increasing the strength of electric field, the magnitude of this force will increase. And at a value of field, which is known as dielectric strength, if you provide sufficient charge to the conductor so that electric field is strong enough and is equal to dielectric strength of air, then this air will break down. Once this air breaks down, it becomes conducting. And this conducting air will start transferring charge from the surface of conductor. It will start transferring charge from the surface of conductor. And you would say that charge is leaking. This is leakage of charge. So charge leak. Charge leak. Due to dielectric breakdown. Breakdown. Of surrounding medium. I'm repeating it again. You take a conductor, you provide some charge to the conductor. This charge will generate some electric field. That electric field will exert force on the surrounding medium. If you keep on increasing the charge, the strength of electric field will increase. And at a value of electric field, which is known as dielectric strength, your surrounding medium gets breakdown. Once your surrounding medium breakdowns, it becomes conductive. And if it becomes conducting, then we'll start taking charge from the surface of conductor. This is the leakage of charge. Basically. So unlike water, there's nothing like was a container, even filling water into it gets filled and it overflows. It's due to dielectric breakdown of the surrounding. Is it clear this concept of leakage of charge of Rosa, Fatma, Joanna? Just note it down, then move on to next topic. This is how charge leaked from the surface of conductor. Any doubt in this topic, leakage of charge? Joanna? Okay. 
So can I erase it? Can I erase it? Okay. See you next. See the capacity of a conductor is very limited. This is. capacitance of a conductor is very much limited you can't provide a charge beyond a certain value if, if you even you take a con conductor of the size of the earth its capacity is still in microfarad its capacity will be 700 microfarad only so if you needs a device or something which can store greater amount of charge means you need a device having capacity of some 1 milliliter just a second. So, the capacity of entire earth is 711 microfarad. So, if you take a conductor of the size of earth, its capacity is just 711 microfarad. But if I ask you to make a device having conductor of capacity of 1 millifarad, 1 millifarad means almost 1000 times that of the capacity of earth. Then obviously you can't take a conductor bigger than earth. So, make a device a device which can store a very large amount of charge and that device is known as capacitor the flashlight of your camera the flashlight of your camera have a capacitor that store a very strong amount of charge when you press the button that flash of light is basically the charge stored in the capacitor that charge stored in the capacitor comes in the form of flash of light so that small camera the flashlight in your mobile phone this capacity is almost same as that of the capacity of Earth. So a conductor have a very limited capacity. So we use capacitor. We make device known as capacitor. And these device can store comparative larger amount of charge. So capacitor, it is a device. used to store charge.
a very small capacitor, a capacitor of the size of the flashlight of your camera or the size of your camera can store charge almost equal to that of entire earth. So there's difference between capacitance and capacitor. Capacitance is the property, charge holding capacity of a conductor. And capacitor is a device which can store charge. So the device used to store charge. So how to make a capacitor? A capacitor consists of a capacitor consists of two oppositively charged conductors charge conductors separated by dielectric medium. So capacitor is simply a device which can store a very large amount of charge. It consists of two conductors. Both the conductors should have opposite charge and that should, they should be separated by a dielectric medium. For example, so this is first conductor, this is second conductor. The first one is positively charged. The second one is negative charged. And the medium between them should be dielectric. If you place a conducting medium between these two conductors, it will be a simply a piece of conductor, a piece of metal. It won't be a capacitor. It will be a capacitor only if the space between the conductors is filled with a dielectric. Now, depending upon the shape and size of these conductors, you have various types of capacitors. depending on shape and size of conductor we have three types of capacitor The first one is parallel plate capacitor. Parallel plate capacitor. The second one is spherical capacitor. And the third one is cylindrical capacitor. In each of these capacitors, the two conductors have different shapes. In parallel plate capacitor, two conductors are basically two plates, one over the other. These plates could be rectangle, square, triangular, disc, but these are two plates. In spherical capacitor, your two conductors are two spheres basically. Two conducting spheres will form a spherical capacitor. Similarly, in a cylindrical capacitor, you have two conducting cylinders. The cylindrical capacitor is not a part of this labors. We'll do only parallel plate capacitor and spherical capacitor. This is the symbol of capacitor. This is the symbol of capacitor. C. Or oh, some authors will draw capacitor using in this family. This also represents a capacitor. Okay, just note, note it down. So the difference between capacitance and capacitor is clear. Don't confuse between capacitance and capacitor. Capacitance is the property and capacitor is a device. Okay, have you heard about any other device which can store a very large amount of charge? Else than capacitor. Have you ever came across a device which can store a large, comparative large amount of charge? No. 
what does cell do no no froza not generator not charger cell is a charger charge a cell huh? a cell can store amount of charge so what is the difference between a cell and a capacitor both are storing charge a cell store charge cell have electrodes a positive electrode and a negative electrode a cell store some charge over those electrodes so what is the difference between cell and capacitor the difference between cell and capacitor is in the mode of discharging a cell discharge gradually if you if you have bulb or lcd light <coughs> in your room that lcd light the light coming from that lcd is constant its intensity is not variable if you take a tube light its intensity of light from that tube light is pretty constant it's it doesn't varies so when a cell discharge it discharges gradually a cell can maintain a constant supply of current it discharges very gradually but instead of cell a capacitor discharges in fractions of a second the example of capacitor is uh, the flashlight of camera the flashlight of camera is not a regular light it's just a flash of light it's flash for a fractions of second and then it goes off so a capacitor discharge in fractions of second capacitor discharge in a fractions of second but a cell discharge gradually it takes time to discharge so that's the difference between a cell and a capacitor so is it clear up to this uh, capacitor now we have to do some three to four derivations on capacitor any doubts so this capacitance and capacitor is clear because whatever we will do now from now onwards is based on based on the topics that we have discussed in the last, last half an hour is so then what about the torch in our sun that torch is due to cell the cell in your mobile phone control that torch in your phone it's due to cell or battery that's why it's is a constant stream of light but that flashlight is not controlled by cell it's basically controlled by capacitor that's why it's just a flash mm -hmm. let's see parallel plate capacitor the next is parallel acha for the next four or five calculations i will use some topics from chapter number 1 as well as chapter number 2 so the first topic that i will use is electric field due to a plane sheet electric field due to plane sheet so the expression of electric field due to a plane sheet is sigma by 2 epsilon this is electric field due to a plane sheet sigma its surface charge density which is charge divided by area third we can write electric field as gradient of potential its dv over dr or for uniform field you can write this as e is minus of delta v over delta i will use these three topics in next four calculation you can note it down if you don't remember this you know you need these three topics in the next four gal four or five gal the next is parallel plate capacitor parallel plate capacitor with air between the plates
so a parallel plate capacitor with air between the plates so you have two plates yes air is dielectric yes air is dielectric you have two plates of area a and separation between the plates is b so a is area of each plate a is area of each plate and d is separation between plates and d is separation between plates see these plates are not just line these are not just wire they basically rectangular sheets so right now you 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 are seeing only the top view of the sheet these sheets are in this way when i am drawing it you you are viewing only the top view the top view. only the top view is visible otherwise these plates are of this shape the plate area is a area of each plate is a and the separation between the plates is b and d is the separation between the plates area of each plate is a and separation between the plates is small so for being a capacitor both the conducting plate should have opposite charge this plate have a positive charge of plus sigma and this plate have a negative charge of minus the next step is you have to calculate electric field between the plates electric field between the plates so fatma what is the direction of field over this point due to this positive plate direction of electric field at this point due to positive plate is it downwards or upwards 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 okay aproza due to this positive plate direction of field over this point is it downwards or upwards the direction of field here yes, aproza is correct fatma the direction of field due to a positive charge is away from the charge right so this is positive charge so direction of field is away from the charge johanna this is how we decide the direction of electric field if you have a positive charge then direction of electric field is away from the charge if you have a negative charge then direction of field is towards the so this is the direction of fields due to positive as well as negative charge so in between the plates your electric field e is see both positive and negative are acting in same direction so you can simply add them up for a positive charge direction of field is away from the charge for a negative charge direction of field is towards the charge next you can write this as e plus and e minus are acting in same directions so it's simply e plus plus e minus you can simply add them up algebraically see here this e plus is electric field due to this positive sheet for a sheet expression of electric field is sigma by 2 epsilon for negative the charge density is same it's again sigma by 2 epsilon we are considering the magnitude of field while considering magnitude we don't consider the negative charge negative sign of the charge so it's sigma by 2 epsilon not plus sigma by 2 epsilon not so net field between the plates is sigma by epsilon 
In the next step, you can just substitute the value of sigma. You can simply write your sigma as q by a. If I substitute the value of sigma here, the expression of feed will comes out to be q over a epsilon. That is equation number one. So in all derivations, in all calculations of capacitance, the first step is common. First of all, you have to calculate the electric field between the plates. Next, you have to calculate potential difference. Say, this plate is positively charged. This plate is negatively charged. So there is a potential difference in between the plates. So potential difference between the plates is V. Potential difference between plates is V. This is the value of potential difference between the plates. You can relate electric field and potential difference in this way. E is minus of delta V over delta R. This negative sign gives the direction of field, but right now we are just interested in magnitude. Fatma, what is the value of delta V here? What is potential difference between the plates? Fatma, what is the potential difference, value of potential difference between the plates? Delta V. Atma. What's the value of potential difference between the plates? No idea. See, this, this, this V, 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 V is the potential difference. Huh? This is V. Okay, Fatma, what is the separation between the plates, delta R? D. Yes, the separation between the plates is D. So if I substitute all these values here, if I substitute all these values here, then your electric field will comes out to be V by D only. I'm eliminating this negative sign because this negative sign gives direction. I don't need direction here. So you can simply write this as V is ED. This is equation number two. If I substitute one and two, your V comes out to be, it's Q by A epsilon naught into D. That's equation number three. Johanna, what is the formula for capacitance? Johanna. Q by V. It's Q by V. So you can substitute the value of V from his third equation. If I substitute 3 and 4, then capacity will be it's Q by V, where V is Q over A epsilon naught into V. This Q gets cancelled out with this Q. This is epsilon naught A by V. So this is the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. See, this is again depends only over geometry. A and D are geometry. Epsilon naught is the absolute permittivity. Is it clear? Any doubt in this calculation? Sir, I missed the part where you said why um, this electric field of positive and negative are in the same direction. Okay. See, the electric field due to positive charge is away from the charge. That's why it's acting in downwards direction. And due to this negative charge, the direction of field is towards the charge. It's again acting in downwards direction. Now, since both the fields are acting in same direction, so you can simply add them up. The net field will be vector sum of E plus and E minus. But since E plus and E minus are in same direction, so we don't need to apply a parallelogram law. We can just simply directly add them. So I'm adding E plus and E minus algebraic. It can be added algebraically only if these two are acting in same direction. 
then I substituted the values of sigma by 2 epsilon naught, sigma by 2 epsilon naught. The field is sigma by epsilon. You have four derivations on parallel plate capacitor. The steps are more or less same. Can I raise it now? What was that? Can I raise it? Same derivation. I'm just making a very small change that instead of air in between the plates, you have a dielectric slab. Although air is a dielectric, but dielectric constant of air is one. So I'm taking a dielectric else than air. Say I could put paper in between the plates of capacity. Can you guess where the calculation Calculations will change. There's an open question for all. Can you just guess where the calculations will change? Instead of air, I put a dielectric. Very good. Epsilon naught. Very good. So instead of epsilon naught, I will use dielectric constant. Say K is dielectric constant. K is dielectric constant of medium between plates. K is the dielectric constant of the medium in between the plates. So instead of air, you have some medium, a medium having dielectric constant K. So I should. So in between the plates of capacitor, I place the medium, the dielectric constant of the medium is K. The dielectric constant is K. So the field is downwards, that's E positive. Field is downwards, that's E negative. The dielectric medium between the plates have a dielectric constant K. So this is K. So the only difference would be instead of two epsilon naught, you will use K. K epsilon naught. So it will be two K epsilon naught. Whenever you have medium other than free space, just, just multiply epsilon naught with K. So it will be K epsilon naught. Your sigma is Q by A, so this will be A K epsilon naught. Here again, this will be a k epsilon. So the only difference in the calculation is this k. A k epsilon. So that will be k epsilon naught a by two. And k is greater than one. So if I com compare this c with that of air. So in air, it was epsilon naught a by d. In medium, this is k epsilon naught a by d. So capacity increases in medium. So capacity increases in medium. I don't have much space here. So I'm writing it here. C medium is greater than C air. 
So if you place a medium having dielectric constant K in between the plates of capacitor, then capacity will increase. Simply becomes K times. So if you place a medium having dielectric constant 20, your capacity will become 20 times. If you place a medium having dielectric constant 1000, then your capacity will become 1000. So is it clear? Okay, just note it down. Can I raise it? In the third calculation, we are again placing the dielectric, but not fully. We are placing the dielectric partially. Parallel plate capacitor. With dielectric slab. Dielectric slab. Partially filled, filled between plates. So these are two plates, a plate having area A and separation D. And in between the plates, we have placed this dielectric slab of dielectric constant K slab of constant K and thickness D. So this is dielectric and this is air. So I have placed this dielectric partially between the plates. So T is the thickness of the slab. Thickness of slab. And here T is less than D. The thickness of the slab is less than the separation between them. In air, the strength of electric field is E0. And in dielectric, the strength of electric field is E. So E0 is electric field in air. The total separation of the plates is D. Out of this D, in separation T, we have dielectric. So this air is in, in region D minus. So the total separation between the plates is D. In separation T you have dielectric. So you have air in separation D minus. Then you have E. E is strength of electric field in medium or electric field in dielectric.
in region T. Okay, what is the value of E naught? What is value of electric field in air? Johanna. Now we will use result that we have calculated in the last two cal last two sections. What is the value of E naught here? Value of E naught is sigma over epsilon. And E is sigma over k epsilon. And see how we have calculated potential difference in the last two calculations. Potential difference, we have always calculated potential difference as product of electric field and separation. So potential difference between the plates. No, Fatma. 2 epsilon naught was for a single plate, but for the complete capacitor, it was always epsilon naught. Sigma by 2 epsilon naught was for a single sheet, but we're taking field for the entire capacitor, which is sigma by 2 epsilon naught plus sigma by 2 epsilon naught, which is sigma by epsilon, right? Yes. Next is potential between plates. Or it's basically potential difference between You can calculate potential difference by just multiplying field with the separation. E naught is in separation D minus T, and your field E is in separation T. This is equation number three. Just substitute equation number one and two and three. and get the value of C. Calculate C now and report your answer in chat. I will not calculate further. The substitute the values, put value of sigma, take value of C as Q by V and report your answer in chat. I need net capacity. Answers, yeah, but the answer of no, Fatma, capacitance in capacitance, you can't have sigma. Na? You will first substitute sigma in terms of Q, then you will take ratio of Q by V so that Q gets cancelled out.
instead of writing you can even dictate your final results instead of typing you can just dictate your final results Rosa, Joanna. Are you calculating or should I calculate it? Yes, sir, calculating. People are calculating. Patma, just put the value of sigma, then put sigma is q by a, then take ratio with q. Is it A by sigma zero? It is A, a D by sigma zero K. Epsilon not zero. Yeah, epsilon. No, no. See, if I substitute these values, you know, values of E naught and E here. So this will be E naught is sigma by epsilon naught D minus T. E is sigma over k epsilon naught into e. In the next step, you can take this sigma by epsilon naught as constant. It's d minus t. This is t plus t by k. In the next step, you can write this sigma as the ratio of charge and area. This is what we have done in the last two calculations. Just substitute sigma as charge upon area. If I substitute this sigma to be charge upon area, then this comes out to be C is Q by A epsilon naught D minus T plus T by K. This is your C. Once you have C, get the value of, sorry, not C, this is, this is potential. This is potential difference. This is potential. This is potential. Next, we can calculate capacitance. Capacitance is the ratio of charge and potential difference. So capacitance is the ratio of charge Q and potential difference, which is Q by A epsilon naught D minus T plus T by K. This Q will cancel this Q and your capacity comes out to be epsilon naught A over D minus T plus D by This is the expression of capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor if a dielectric slab is introduced partially. You can do one more thing. In denominator, you can just take this T as common and you are left with just 1 minus 1 by T. This is again. Joanna, can you compare this capacitance with that of parallel plate capacitor having air? This is epsilon naught A by D. When the, when the medium between the plates of capacitor is air, then the capacitance is epsilon naught A by D. Can you compare this result with C air? This C is greater than C air, less than C air, or equal to C air? Joanna. Air is more. 
sea air is more. Okay, Fatma, can you compare sea and sea air? This is sea epsilon naught a over d minus t one minus one by k, and this is sea air, which is epsilon naught a by d. Which one is greater? Um, sea, no, sea, sea air is less. Sea air is less. Why is it less? Um, because t into one minus one by k is being subtracted from the denominator. Hmm. See, Joanna, the numerator in both the cases is same, but here in C air your denominator is d, but for C with dielectric your denominator is d minus d. So subtracting something from the denominator. If denominator decreases, then overall function increases. Like out of two by three and two by five, two by three is greater because the denominator is small. So you can say that C is greater than C air. So if you introduce a dielectric slab partially, then again your capacity will increase. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, let's just note it down. Is one more calculation with parallel plate capacitor. Can I raise it? The next is instead of dielectric slab, we can substitute place a conducting slab here. See what will happen if instead of dielectric slab, I substitute a conducting slab. So instead of dielectric slab, let's have a conducting slab. So Johanna, what is net field inside a conductor? This um, zero. Yes, it's a conductor. So in a conductor, net field is zero. In a conductor, net field is zero. Right? So it's a conductor. Inside the conductor, net electric field is. So this E here is zero. Just solve this calculation. And I need final result. Please don't make any mistake now. The same calculation instead of E just substitute zero. Calculate capacity, net capacitance and report your answer in chat. No, Fatma, only E will be zero. Na? There is still some electric field in air, which is in the region D minus T. Sir, E zero and E is same. E zero and, no, no. E zero okay. is field within air, inside air. So E zero is sigma by epsilon. But E is electric field inside the conductor, which is zero. So they are different. 
So here this E naught is sigma by epsilon naught. And E is zero, right? Only electric field inside the conductor is zero, not the total field. Calculate total capacitance. Very good, Afroza. You're correct. Padma, Rivena. All are correct. So if I quickly substitute the values, your V will be it's sigma by epsilon naught D minus T plus zero. So V is simply Q over A epsilon naught D minus. Next you can calculate C. Huh? Now capacitance C will be is the ratio of Q by V. So it's Q by Q by A epsilon naught D minus D. Gets cancelled out. So capacity is epsilon naught A over D minus. This capacitance is again greater than capacity of A. So whatever you do, you, you can substitute a dielectric fully between the plates or you can place your dielectric partially or you can put a conducting slab inside your capacitor. In all cases, capacity will be greater than that of free space. So can I erase it now? You all were correct. The next is, what if you have a number of dielectrics for n dielectrics? So this is your parallel plate capacitor. And in this, between the plates, you placed number of dielectrics. This is first dielectric, you place second dielectric. You place nth dielectric, so I've placed n number of dielectrics. This is K1, dielectric constant K2, dielectric constant K. Thickness is T1, thickness is T2, thickness is Tn. The area of the plate is A, the separation between the plates is T. So the formula which we have derived like epsilon naught A by D minus T plus T by K, we will just generalize this. Instead of T, I will write T1 plus T2 up to T, T by K. So it will be T1 by K1, T2 by K2, Tn by K. So this is the capacitance, epsilon naught A by D minus T1 plus T2 plus Tn, T1 by K1, T2 by K2 up to Tn by K. So this is the capacity of parallel plate capacitor if you have n dielectric Just noted down only one last calculation on spherical capacitor. 
then we will do numericals. Joanna, can I raise it? Sir, I'm having a doubt. Okay. Yes. Why? Uh, yeah. Why are we adding T1 by K1 plus T2 by K2? While deriving this uh, parallel plate capacitor with a single dielectric slab, partially free, we got this result, right? Epsilon naught A by D minus T plus T by K. This we did in the last to last section. A parallel plate capacitor with a dielectric slab partially free, right? Yeah. So if instead of a single slab, you have a number of slabs. So instead of this T, if we derive, you will get T1, sum of T1, T2, Tn, all slabs. Similarly, earlier you have just one dielectric slab, so you're getting T by K. But when you have N slabs, then you will get this T by K for each slab. You'll get one T1 by K1 for this slab, K2, T2 by K2 for this slab, Tn by Kn for this slab. That's why I'm adding it up. If you want exact derivation, then you can derive it in this way. Like we have right two fields, na? E naught, which is sigma by epsilon naught. Then I wrote this E, which is sigma by K epsilon naught. You will write this as K1 epsilon. You can write this as E1. You can write this as E2. Then you can have E3, which is sigma by K3 epsilon naught or K2 epsilon. For putting, yes, you can just multiply field with separation. It will be like sigma by epsilon naught into D minus. If the total separation is D and thickness of each dielectric is T1, T2, Tn. So the air, the separation left for air is T minus T1 plus T2 plus Tn, right? The whole separation is D. Dielectrics are in thickness T1 plus T2 plus Tn. So air is in separation by T minus T1 plus T2 plus Tn. So we multiply it with D minus T1 plus T2 plus Tn. So this is how these terms will arise due to n dialectics. Joanna? Yes, sir. Okay, so got it. So the next is parallel plate capacitor is over. We will do numericals after uh, deriving formula of energy. After parallel plate capacitor, the next thing we have is spherical capacitor. This is spherical capacitor is not given in theory in NCRT, but NCRT have given a numerical when you are asked to derive the expression of spherical capacitor. So I'm solving that numerical. So spherical capacitor will consist of two conducting spheres. It consists of two conducting spheres. First is sphere of radius A and the outer sphere of radius. We place a charge Q on the surface of first sphere. A minus Q charge will induce, due to this plus Q, a negative charge will get induced on the surface of inner sphere. A charge plus Q will induce on the surface of outer. But we have altered the outer conductor. Because we need just equal and opposite charges. We need a charge plus Q and a charge minus Q. We don't need this positive Q charge. Because for a capacitor, you need two conductors which are oppositively charged. So I need a conductor having charge plus Q and another with charge minus Q. I don't need this plus Q. So to remove this plus Q, I just altered this conductor. So now you have two conductors, an inner sphere having charge Q and an outer sphere having charge minus is it clear? Yes. Next, you need potential difference between inner and outer sphere. Potential difference between inner and outer sphere.
inner and outer. So the potential difference between the spheres is just subtract the potential of two spheres. So it's Q over four pi epsilon naught A minus Q over four pi epsilon naught B. You can even derive this result using first calculate field, which is KQ by R. Then you can calculate potential difference by integrating the field. But since we have done potential difference in the last section, that potential on the surface of sphere is this. I'm using the direct results. Here. It's Q by 4 pi. You can take Q by 4 pi epsilon naught as common and you are left with just 1 pi minus 1 pi. Just note it down and calculate the capacity. You know that capacity is the ratio of Q by B. Note it down and complete this calculation. Report your final answer in chat. Just calculate capacitor. The formula is same. It's Q by V. Just substitute the value of V and get C. Answers. It's a simple calculation. Now, professor, there is only one single charge, not two charges. See, C is simply Q by B. There's only one charge. Q. So it's Q by Q by 4 pi epsilon naught. It's 1 by A minus 1 by B. You can cancel this Q with this Q. 4 pi epsilon naught will be in numerator. This is 1 by A minus 1 by B. Next, you can take LCM, 4 pi epsilon naught. You can take this AB as LCM. So you are left with just B minus A. This AB will come to this side and C will be 4 pi epsilon naught AB over B minus A. So this is the capacitance of spherical capacitor. Is it clear now, Padma, Afroza, Joanna?
so this is about the capacitance of types of capacitor parallel plate capacitor and spherical capacitor so can we have a class tomorrow morning tomorrow morning 8 am an extra class tomorrow at 8 am it will be around 1 hour class yes Johanna, Fatma. Fatma. Tomorrow 8 a.m. Sure. Okay, let's stop here. We'll continue it tomorrow at the same time. If you have any doubts, we can discuss it. Class is over. If you have any doubt, we can discuss it. A numerical assignment anywhere. Class is over. If you don't have any doubt, you Sir, can... There was a message in group about some extra classes or something. Uh, that's, mis of, of, that's about the same batch. I will keep some extra classes. I'm keeping a class on Friday, then Saturday and Sunday. That okay. message is the same batch. Thank you, sir. Yes, Joanna, you have done doubt? No, no, sir. No. Thank you, sir.